Hello and welcome to Joy Sightings, edition number 46. Today I read three more parables from The Wit and Wisdom of Safed the Sage. They are The First Robin, The River Current, and The Robin and the Cherries. The First Robin Now the winter had been long and very cold, and the snow had been deep, and spring was not yet come. And I rose early in the morning, and I looked out of mine window, and behold, a robin. And I called unto Keturah, and said, Come quickly, and see thou hasten thine arrival at the window. For here is a friend of ours that is come from a far country to visit us. And Keturah came to the window, and she also beheld the robin. Now the robin looked at us, and hopped about upon the cold and bare ground, and looked for the early worm, but the bird was earlier than the worm. And Keturah went to her kitchen to see what she might find that the robin would eat. And I spake to the robin and said, Behold, thou hast been where it was warm, and the sun did shine, and thou couldst have stayed there, but here thou art. And thou comest while it is yet winter, for the prophecy of spring is in thy blood. Thy faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Thou hast come many miles, yea, hundreds of miles, to a land that lies desolate, because thou hast within thy soul the assurance that spring is near. O oh, that there were in human life some assurance that would send men forth to their high destiny with as compelling a conviction. And I thought of the eye that is formed in darkness, but formed for the light, and the ear that is wondrously shaped in silence, but made for the hearing of music, and for the human soul that is born into a world where sin is, yet born with an assurance of righteousness. And I blessed the little bird that had caused me to think of these things. And I went forth among men that day, and they said, Salam, Safed, behold, is it not a cold and long winter? And I said, Speak to me no more of winter. And they said, Wherefore should we not speak of winter? Behold the thermometer and the empty coal bin. But I held mine head proudly, and I said, Speak to me no more of winter. Behold, on this morning I did see the first robin. For me henceforth it is spring." THE RIVER CURRENT We sailed on the river, I and Keturah, yea, upon two rivers, and even three. For we entered into a ship, and sailed down the Mississippi, and up the Ohio, and then up the Tennessee. And we sailed for eight days, and we sailed for a thousand miles. And the waters in all these rivers were high, and the current was swift. And we ascended the Tennessee slowly by reason of the current. And I grew anxious, for I must needs return for the next Sabbath, and one Sabbath I had already been away. And the captain spoke unto me, saying, Fear not, we ascend slowly, but we shall go down the river like a bat escaping out of perdition. And that was the way we came down. And we neared a city the name whereof was Paducah, where three great rivers meet, even the Tennessee and the Cumberland and the Ohio, and I and Keturah, we were to leave the boat there. 
And the captain came unto me, and he said, Behold, I was mistaken. We shall hardly make thy train. And I said, Behold how fast we go, and Paducah is but twenty miles away. And he said, Paducah is indeed but twenty miles away, but we are not going fast. We are burning just as much coal, and the wheels are going around just as fast, but we are no longer in the waters of the Tennessee, but in the backwaters of the Ohio. For the Ohio is rising more rapidly than the Tennessee, wherefore the mighty current that bore us down hath ceased, and a mightier current, all unseen, doth hold us back. And I thought of the men who begin their religious life with a strong current of love and devotion, moving with their will and mightily sweeping them forward toward their desired haven. But of the unseen currents of worldliness that imperceptibly retard them and even cause them to drift the other way. And on the Sabbath I stood before my congregation, and I said, O men and women, think not because the wheels still go around, and thou art puffing and making much smoke, that thou shalt surely go to heaven. Behold, there is an undertow, and a mighty inflooding that may hold thee back, or even drift thee whither thou wouldest not go. These things I spake on the Sabbath, because in spite of the backwater, I and Keturah, we got there. The Robin and the Cherries there groweth a cherry tree hard by the house where I dwell, and in the spring it was full of blossoms, so that I wondered not at the people of Japan who rejoice with great joy in the cherry blossom time. And I was glad that George Washington did not pass that way in his boyhood. And after the blossoms came the cherries, and they grew wondrous fast. And I said unto Keturah, We shall have no lack of cherries. And she said, Be thou not sure, there are things that can happen to cherries ere thou dost eat them. Now before the cherries were ripe, I went to the window, and behold, a robin in the cherry tree. And he sat so that he was nigh unto me, and he moved not away when I came nigh. And I spake, saying, Behold, these cherries are mine. Moreover, they're not yet ripe. And the ground is full of nice, juicy worms. Go thither and eat, and disturb not my cherries. And the robin turned his head on one side and pecked at a cherry that was beginning to be red. And then he turned his head the other way and pecked at another. And I said, Hast thou not heard of Mr. Hoover, and how he desireth that we eat all of us substitutes? Eat thou not of my cherries, but eat bugs, they are excellent substitutes. So shalt thou please Mr. Hoover, yea, and me also. And the robin spake unto me, saying, Dost thou not remember the morning in early spring when first I came, and how thy heart did rejoice in me? And behold, I have builded my nest, and reared my young, and fed them with worms which I took from thy garden, and now I'm ready for cherries. And Keturah, she came, and we stood there, and talked unto the bird, both of us, and the robin was not affrighted, but listened to all we had to say, and still continually did he peck at the unripe cherries. And Keturah answered and said, There will be cherries left for us, if we get out and pick them when they be first ripe. Some of them will I can. Yea, and I will make for thee a wondrous cherry pie, 
with all the stones taken out. And as for the robins, let them have their share. If I had to live on worms for the most part of the year, I should welcome the ripening of the cherries. And I looked at the red that was coming on the cheek of the cherries, and then at that on the breast of the robin, and I said, Old fellow, go to it. We will go fifty-fifty on those cherries. There is no joy in life, but doth cost something, and the robin is worth the cherries he doth eat.'"